was um, recently asked by a friend if I might make a video uh, helping people to learn to walk their dog on a loose leash. And so I thought, well, you know, that's a, that's a very nice thing to do because uh, most people end up pulling their dogs or using a choke collar or some other uh, means to get their dog to walk by their side. And what I found is that it's best to teach your dog several different behaviors uh, so that the dog has a history of reinforcement zone, being by your heel side or by your other side. And so with that end in mind, uh, what I do is I break the behavior down and I teach on a bowl like this. This is uh, just a feed bowl that you can buy at the feed store or tractor supply store and it's a nice weight. It's a rubber bowl. You turn it over and it has um, a nice surface on it. What your dog uh, learns with this, I will make a video of that, is to uh, pivot. And when they pivot, they're uh, actually getting some muscle memory for rear end awareness, which is really important when your dog is going to be uh, getting in to your heel side. So you'll see the video, and this is the bowl. Uh, the next thing I use after that bowl is actually a smaller training aid that I just uh, have made. And this is a burner plate that you buy for your stove. And then also this is a dust mitt. And uh, on the top of this dust mitt, it's very highly textured. And so I just wire this to this. And that way my dog does know when its feet are making contact with its target. So you first start out with the bigger bowl, then you transition to this. And I'll make a video showing both of those items. Uh, the next thing I use is actually this. This is uh, not what it seems. This is not fencing. This is an item called store floor. And you can buy it uh, online. Uh, I bought this one from Sears online. And it's actually used for putting your clothes uh, in. Uh, but what I do is I dismantle it and I use each panel and I tie that panel together with zip ties. And you can make one long barrier or you can make two shorter ones. It's very versatile and it's also highly recommended if you're going to be teaching a backup, which I'm going to get to in just a second. But when you're teaching a, a backup and many other behaviors, you want to set your dog up for success. So I need to use the barrier so that my dog can do the correct behavior and not like swing wide or or something like that so i'll show you that video on backup backup is a very uh basic behavior that your dog needs to have as a prerequisite for some of the other behaviors that are i'm going to show you that help your dog to understand how to come back to you when you're walking without you having to pull on their leash so we'll talk about that in a minute the other thing I use are traffic cones, and you can use just two of them, or you can get a, a few of them, but I use two to begin with, and I teach my dog to walk in a figure eight with me on leash, and this teaches the dog to walk on the inside and on the outside. So it's a really nice exercise, and of course the, the cones are easy to find. So there's those items. And the next item I use is this. This is a platform. And I'm, I'm going to include uh, a site that you can look at. And it includes the instructions of how to uh, make your own platform. And I can't improve on it, so I'm not going to waste a bunch of time talking about it. But I will show you in videos uh, how I make use of the platform, again, as a training uh, aid for my dog to learn where in space is the best place for them to be. And uh, I want my dog to learn to be at my heel side or at my right side. So those are the training aids that you might uh, consider purchasing and making. Uh, you, that's all you need. That and a darling puppy like I have. Yet a good girl. Okay, so we're back. And look how she loves her bowl. She just comes running right up to it because she's what they call magnetized to her bowl. And I'm going to show you that that's the first step that you need to acquire. So the way to do that is this. First of all, 
I'm going to reset her. So search, and I'm going to click when she comes back up to the bowl. Now, if for some reason, when you toss your treat, your dog doesn't come to the bowl, then you're going to lure them. So, yes, isn't that yummy? Yeah, mostly I use kibble. But I, uh, in this case, I've also uh, used some of these nice training treats, and I mix them in with the kibble so that the kibble takes on some of the flavor uh, and more high reinforcement value than just the regular kibble, although she likes her kibble. Yes, yeah, she's going to show off for you. But before we get to that little girl, I want to show the folks at home how they can get their puppy to like to do pivot work like Nutmeg does. So I'm going to toss the treat away, and then I'm going to hold the treat here and pretend she doesn't really like to get on her bowl. But of course, by luring her, she will get on the bowl. So that's the first thing. The next thing you want to do is to get your puppy to move their hind legs. So I've got a clicker, but you could also make use of your marker word if you have one. I use yes or the clicker. And so uh, what I want is to see her move in relation to me. I try to keep her basically at 12 o'clock so that I can see if she's moving her rear uh, legs because that's really what I want. So to get that, uh, I'm just going to have my hands got maybe four or five treats in it and I'm keeping it closed but she knows I've got treats and I've got them here and every time she moves her legs uh, even if it's a half a step you want to click and reward right away for that movement so you can move your puppy around the bowl good job little girl yay and there she goes so that's the, the first part of uh, pivot work, and this uh, teaches your dog how to move their rear end independently because that's not something that they do naturally. They actually are more driven, you know, forward. So you want to teach your dog that they do have a rear end, and uh, that's something that you're going to need to have in place when you want your dog to come in and swing in and come to your heel side. So there's that video. I'm going to toss this treat, and then we're going to go on to the next step using the pivot bowl. There you go. Search. Your puppy should be doing what Nutmeg's doing. I'm going to be tossing the treat away. She comes back. She's magnetized to her bowl. She can work with me at 12 o'clock. She moves her hind legs real well. Now the next part is going to be her doing an independent pivot. Uh, so it's kind of like what the elephants do in the circus. I'm going to step away from the bowl. I've got my hand uh, with the treats in my palm, but what she's seeing is knuckles down, and then as she moves, I reward her. And so now I actually don't even have a treat. So I'm going to start to transition from always having a treat to not having one. So I don't have a treat. She's moving around, and then I reward her. So she's moving around on her own. She's like, how many of these things do I have to do before I get my treat? Well, I made her do a few of them. And now I'm going to give her her reward. All right, now we're going to go the other way. So I'm going to have a treat or two in my hand. She starts to move around, and I'm going to reward her for that. Now, when I reward her, I want to make sure that it's at a time when she's actually passing me. So she's passed me, not lined up. Now, when you're doing this with your own dog, yes, you're going to have to use your clicker. Yes, your marker word. Yes. So here she is. She's going to pass me. Yes. I mark it, and then I feed her. Now, I'm not going to do it with any food, so she'll have to do a couple without food, and then I'll reward her with a piece of kibble. And because I'm not feeding her, I'm not going to say yes right away. Yes, good job. And now I'm going to reward her. Good job. And maybe she gets two rewards in a row. And then, no reward. Good girl. I'm just going to praise her. What a good girl. And then I'm going to reward her. 
She passes me. Yes, good job. Now I'm going to throw this away uh, so that I reset her. Search. And the next part of this is you're going to invite yourself in. So as she's uh, doing her little elephant walk, I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to put a couple of pieces of treat in my left hand. And she's going to be coming around, actually counterclockwise. So I'm going to let her go around a couple of times. Good job. And then I'm going to invite myself in just before she would have passed me. That's why you want to uh, have her do it on her own so she develops some momentum for going around. She's going to be targeting my heel side. There she goes. And now I pulled my hand back. Um, I'm still turning it over and have knuckles down and then turn it over to feed her. But I'm moving my hand back so that she'll have the picture that she's going to have when we start doing more heel work without the pivot bowl. So now I don't have a treat in my hand, but she doesn't know that. And I've, I've got my knuckles down. What a good job you're doing. And she's moving with me. So I'm going to reach over and get a couple of pieces of kibble. Yes, good girl. Yes, good girl. Every time she comes around and targets my hip, or my left side, I'm going to say yes just before she targets me. Now, because I want her to heal on my right side as well, I'm going to um, go ahead and have her do that. I'm going to reset her. Search. I'm going to have her do a couple of her little elephant walks around. Good girl. She's getting dizzy. <laughs> and uh, then as she comes around, whoopsie. Yeah, she's getting dizzy. Uh, I'm going to do this. So I invite myself in. What a good girl. Let's rest here for a minute so your head stops spinning. You did so good. Now I'm going to move my hand back to my right hip. And I'm going to start to move. Yes. And then I uh, say yes or I would click every time she makes contact with my right side. So. Yes. Now I have no treat. However, I'm going to reach over here and get her a couple of pieces of kibble. Yes. Yes. So that's that portion of it. The next video is going to be transitioning from her larger rubber bowl to her smaller uh, target that she's going to be pivoting on next. You did so good as usual.
be transitioning from the larger rubber bowl and doing the same uh, behaviors that we did on there, but now on her flat uh, burner plate. So I'm going to start out by free seeing if she chooses to get up on her burner plate, her smaller target. Good girl. Free. And so she does. That's the first step. So you're always going to uh, kind of back up in steps when you switch to um, a new target or um, a comparatively new behavior, even though it may seem similar to the previous one. You're always going to back up your steps and click and reward. So I'm going to have her start to do an elephant walk on her new uh, target. Good job. So she's doing that really well. Now I'm going to have her go the other way. And I'm clicking for every time she moves. So there you go. Yes, you're doing so well. So I'm going to give her a chance here. I'm going to free to <clears throat> stop spinning. <laughs> then you want to keep your, your lessons fairly short uh, because it does get, you know, kind of dizzying, I'm, I'm sure. So I'm going to get a couple of treats now in my uh, right, my left hand. I'm going to go ahead and have her start doing her elephant walk, and I'm going to invite myself in. I'm going to pull my hand back to my hip. I'm going to click every time she comes and makes contact with my left side. And I'm going to free her. Free. And now I'm going to put the treats in my right hand. I'm going to step in. Good job. And start moving around the new uh, target. Pull my hand back. And at this point, you can start to do your random reinforcements. So sometimes you're going to have a treat. Sometimes you're not going to have a treat right away. Uh, but when you transition from the larger bowl to your smaller target, uh, in the beginning, you're going to be treating quite a bit, just like you did originally. And then you're going to start to do uh, your random reinforcements. And then praise, and then every once in a while, a treat. So those are the steps. And you did so good as usual. Okay, so I've got um, a setup here that is not what I normally use. Uh, because of the lighting here, it's best for the video. And I've got um, my uh, barrier set up here, my store floor that I've put together to make a little fencing. And the other side of the barrier, in this case, is my couch. Uh, but you could also, of course, set this up next to a wall. And it would be best for you to do this on carpet instead of the tile because when you use your uh, target, which in my case I'm using the cushion that I showed earlier, um, I'm having to put it on a blanket and also another mat. The reason why is because it was skidding as she would move back and put her hind legs on it. And, of course, that's not what you want. But this is how you would start out. So I'm going to step over my barrier, and I'm going to draw her uh, from the back forward so that her back feet are now making contact with the target for her backup. And then I gradually move into her, and at first, I'm not asking for much. All I'm looking for is just for her to shift her weight backwards so that her feet are on the target. Um, so I'm going to draw her just a little bit into me, and then I'm going to move myself into her. It's the pressure of me moving my body ever so slightly that causes her to go backwards. And then you just start to build on that behavior, uh, pulling her a little more forward and off of the target mat eventually, and then towards her, and she'll step right back up on it. So I'm going to use, I've got my clicker and I've got my treats. I'm going to lure her off of it and then step into her and she backs into that on her own. It's important for a nice backup that uh, your dog understands 
about the target mat. If you try to teach this without targeting uh, and without a barrier, it's going to be much more difficult and your dog is not going to be backing straight. They're going to be going wide one way or the other. And um, also, they're not going to have any sense for where their hind legs are in space. So they need to feel something under those hind legs when you're first teaching your back up. So I'm going to draw her a little uh, closer to me. Back up. I'm going to give her a little bit of pressure. Back up. And that's what that would look like in the beginning stages for you. Uh, at this point, she's a little uncomfortable with this particular setup here, uh, but she can normally back up quite confidently for a ways. But that just goes to show that when you change venues, when you change the area that you're training in, whether it be from outside to uh, indoors or vice versa, uh, with more distractions, you're going to find you have to make it easier again. So, back up. And I don't start to add that cue until I know that my dog is actually doing the behavior, of course. So I'm going to draw her towards me. Back up. Good job. And I click when her feet hit that. So, back up. So that's basically it. You just build on that beginning. Good girl. Now I'm going to show you um, a, a few uses for your platform that I mentioned in the other video when I was talking about all the training aids. So I'm going to put this down. Now she has already, of course, uh, had a lot of experience with her platform and she loves it. But I'm going to show you how this is achieved. So I'm going to toss the treat away. Good girl. And then I'm going to lure her and click for having uh, her feet on here. Now. You can see that initially she only had three feet on, so I move myself just slightly and it uh, helps her to move with me and then her other leg or her foot will get on this. But initially don't worry about that. What you want is for your dog search to even just step on it. So I'm going to click right there and uh, I'm going to be clicking and treating. I'm going to toss the treat out the other way click and treat and then uh, by like I say by moving your hand adjusting your own body you can actually get your dog to put all four feet on here but this particular uh, skill might take your dog one whole or two whole training sessions so don't be in a hurry you want your dog to really like to get on here so once your dog is doing this and you're tossing your treat out in different directions and in this case, um, I'm having her come directly to front. But now, uh, let's just say your dog is at this point and they're, they're just on this all the time. Uh, when you're standing here, they're coming to your front, they're doing really well. So the next step is going to be you toss your treat out and you take a position. Now I went ahead and um, took my position here so that my right side is perpendicular to the platform and now she finds herself in a reinforcement zone which uh, is my right side and I'm going to click and treat. Click and treat. From this position you can also work on eye contact so you can uh, work on stand, you can work on sit and down. Um, all different behaviors are easily taught once your dog is on the platform uh, so that they know uh, that this is the best place to be. Here, look at me. Watch me. Good girl, yay! That's a good job. So I'm going to toss the treat away, and I'm going to stand here, and here she is. She's made her way over here, and she's at my heel side, and I'm going to feed several times, and I'm going to uh, suggest to you that you do a lot of, look at me. So that when your dog is looking at you, uh, you can click, good girl. So I come down from my uh, forehead, from between my eyes with the treat, and that encourages her to look in this direction. Uh, another thing you can work on here, stand, good. Uh, and I'll make another video maybe of that, is sit, stand, 
and down. So I encourage her to do um, a nice kickback stand, a tucked in sit, and more or less a sphinx type down. So that's another use for the platform. Another thing you can do is work on your uh, leave it alone, leave it alone. Good job. So because she left those alone, I'm going to feed her myself. Leave it alone. I give her the cue, and then I toss the treats out. This is, uh, as I mentioned in another video, uh, this is really an important skill to have. Uh, otherwise, you, your dog is going to be searching all the time for any treats you may have inadvertently dropped or anything else they find on the floor. So good girl. All right, so thank you, Nutmeg. Search. Now she's reluctant to do that because all these are here. Good girl. So I got to give her her release cue, which is free. Good girl. And then I'm going to point to these. So she knows it's okay to eat them. Okay, so another use for your platform. Uh, you can teach your dog um, to stay while you swing your leg over. I'm going to click and treat. I'm going to swing my other leg over. I want her to be very comfortable with straddling uh, between my legs. And uh, in my next little video, I'm going to show you the importance of that and how it, it applies to heel work and other things. Lots of tricks uh, involve your dog being comfortable uh, being next to you. So I might even kind of bounce her a little bit between my knees. And all the time, I'm feeding her, and she's happy with me being here. I can even move backwards and continue to feed her so that her or she's facing front. Now, for a lot of uh, trick dog behaviors and obedience work, stand. Uh, this is a great behavior to have. Stand. I like that nice kickback stand. She's keeping her feet <clears throat> at the top of the platform. She's been taught this from this position first, and now I'm doing it from the side and from the back. So, uh, you know, that's just another way to use your platform. Good girl. Stay. All right, so I'm going to make just a real short little clip here of using your cones in a figure eight. So I'm going to bring her over to my, uh, in this case, I'm walking her on my right side. So I'm going to start out. And I'm going to take like just one step and I'm going to click. Every time I click, I also feed so that the click becomes uh, her signal that I'm doing something correct. And once I hear that click, at some point I'm going to get a treat. So I'm turning my hand just like I did on the pivot bowl. Uh, and then I'm going to keep walking and I keep my hand by my side. So as I'm doing this, she's learning to walk on the inside, and she's learning to walk on the outside. And that's basically what this is for. So it's a, a pretty nice thing. You can take your cones with you uh, as you transition your dog from doing this heel work uh, indoors to outdoors, so that they've got something to keep their mind on, and they're focusing on their heel work and walking with you rather than uh, all the other distractions that might be happening outside. So I start slowly. I do a lot of this work inside. Then I transition to the backyard, to the front porch, down the driveway, and eventually down the sidewalk and then to noisier, more distracting areas. Look at this. You're just so silly. Good girl. Thank you.